Hi there. Today we are reading Will Be the Bumblebee. It's Miss Nancy. So Will Be the Bumblebee was written by Craig Smith and Maureen Thompson, and it was illustrated by Katz Cowley. Now, Craig Smith and Maureen Thompson um, also wrote the book The Wonky Donkey, and The Wonky Donkey was all over the internet around Christmas time because there was a grandma who was reading it for her children or grandchildren and laughing so hard she couldn't get over it. So it was really funny. I will see if I can find that clip and I will put it on our Google Classroom so you can watch it if you want to. Um, I'm gonna describe the pictures today for our friends who don't see as well as some of us and I hope that you really enjoy it. So the cover of the book has this big happy looking bumblebee on it and it's called again Will Be the Bumblebee. All right, so our first page is really green, shows lots of green, looks like it's like in the clearing in a forest, there's some trees around the outside, there are flowers everywhere, it's very pretty and very peaceful looking, and it says, Wilby the bumblebee lives his life in your garden so happily. Okay, this next picture shows us in the middle of the garden. Wilby is flying in the air. There are trees and flowers. You can see the sun coming up over some of the trees. Again, it's very peaceful looking. It says, up early in the morning till the evening hour, flying around from flower to flower. This page has a big yellow and purplish flower on it and then some smaller ones of the same type of flower. And then we see Wilby and he is way off to the right hand side and it looks like he is getting some nectar from an orange flower. It says, now everybody knows, I suppose, without bees in your garden, nothing grows. They take the pollen to where it's supposed to be that's how nature works. Good job, Wilby. All right, here we see a portrait of Wilby. He is looking happy and smiling. Now he has these little yellow balls all over his legs and his furry body. And that, I believe, is supposed to be the pollen that he is picking up from the flowers. And that pollen gets dropped off at other flowers as he flies around the garden. The words say, Now bumblebees, from the day they are born, wear a black and yellow jersey just to keep them warm. And Wilby's was special. It was a perfect fit because Wilby's mother had knitted it. And so on this page, we see pictures of Wilby's mom with a pattern in her hand. And then we see her measuring him. And finally, we see her sitting down and knitting his little black and yellow jacket that he's wearing. Okay, this page shows a big red flower and a little tiny Wilby standing right next to the flower. And then we see some black and yellow yarn stretching across the page. And it looks like the flower is a rose because there's a thorn and the yarn is stuck on the thorn. It says, Willoughby was out one sunny day. Unknown to him, his jersey had begun to fray. And his jersey caught where it was torn, right on the end of a rose's thorn. Oh, the next page shows a rose garden. It's got lots of roses in it. And we see Wilby flying away, and the whole way behind him is this line of what looks like thread or yarn. And we see a very worried look on Wilby's face as he's flying away. The words say, And as Wilby flew away, he did not stop. His jersey unraveled from the bottom to the top. 
and when he realized this, he lost his hum. He was showing the whole garden his bare bum. While with no jersey and being late in the day, Wilby was so cold he couldn't fly away. Oh, and poor Wilby is huddled on a big green leaf, and now he's just black. All we see is his little body just black with his wings and his antenna, and he looks so scared. There's some orange flowers off to the right. We see him little on that, and then we see him in on the uh, green leaves over to the right. And you can see a little bit of the thread or the yarn from his little sweater hanging down. Now, we know this can't be true because we know bees don't have sweaters made of yarn, but it is kind of a fun story, isn't it? Let's see what happens next. On the left of this page, we see two antenna and a big orange and black wing. I wonder what that's a part of. Do you know what has a big black and orange wing that is another type of insect? Let's read and see if you find out. We see Wilby over on the right hiding in the little leaves from the roses. It says, he was frightened and all alone. All he wanted to do was to get home. Oh, we haven't found out who that orange wing belongs to yet. I bet you might be able to guess. We'll see if it tells us on the next page. Now, Monica, the butterfly, that's who belongs to that orange wing, she flew down. She told Wilby to wipe off his frown. She'd seen what had happened and thought she knew what to do. She gathered all the wool up and off she flew. And the picture shows us this giant butterfly with a smile on her face. She's got white polka dots and her wings are orange and black and she's looking right at poor Wilby. Wilby still looks a little scared, but I think he's probably glad he's getting some help. He still is, is just in his little black skin there, blackish, grayish, I don't know what color you would actually say it is, but you know, he still doesn't have his little sweater back on because of course it's just string right now, right? Well, let's see what happens. All right, this page, ooh, it shows a creepy looking spider in his web in a tree. He's got lots of books in his web. That's kind of silly. And it looks like he has a crown on his head. And we see him knitting. Orange or yellow and black striped, what? Sweater, right? The words say, with the unraveled wool, she flew to Spider Steve and asked him for help because she knew he could weave. With a twist of his arm, she had him agree. He would weave the wool they had and make a new jersey. Okay, so he's not knitting, he's weaving. Either way, he's making something with the wool thread. And this page shows the spider Steve and he is standing on the leaves and he's waving to Monica the butterfly and she is flying off with a black and yellow sweater or jersey in her little hands. It shows a nice blue sky too. And it says, now spider Steve, he finished so quickly. He used a pattern he'd found in Woman's Weekly. Monty with a smile, she thanked him so, but Wilby needed help and now she had to go. How silly to think a spider has a magazine he can find a pattern in, huh?
All right, now we see a great big Monica butterfly. Holy cow, she takes up the whole page. She's orange and black, and she's got white spots all over her. And she is looking down on Wilby, who looks very happy now. And it looks like she is helping him to put his little sweater on. They're both smiling and looking happy. And Wilby's reaching up. It says, she found Wilby where he was last. She said, quick, put this on really, really fast. On this page, we see a very happy Wilby waving goodbye and flying away. And we see a ladybug and a beetle and I don't know if that's a caterpillar or a millipede or what it is. But they're all standing up to say goodbye to him. And it says... With his new jersey on, he got back his hum. All his bits were warmed up, even his bum. Now on this page, Wilby's getting a great big hug from Monica, and they both look so happy. Remember, Monica's the butterfly that helped him out, huh? Wilby hugged Monty with a big thank you. He asked her to thank Spider Steve for him, too. But now back to his house he had to go, for he knew his mom would worry because she loved him so. Now, on a sunny day in your backyard, you might still see Willoughby working hard. From flower to flower and carefree, wearing his new black and yellow jersey. And this picture shows um, a bunch of little pink flowers and we see Wilby flying around in the middle of them and there's a ladybug on one of them. And that is the last page of the story. So he lost his little jacket and then he got it back again. I've been calling it a jacket, a sweater, a jersey. I don't know, you could call it whatever you wanted. And that's the end of Wilby the Bumblebee. I'm so happy he was able to get his jersey back or to have a new one made for him out of the same wool. Have you ever had something that got torn or ruined in some way and somebody was able to fix it for you? It's a very nice feeling to know somebody would go to the trouble to fix something that has gotten ruined of yours, isn't it? I hope that you liked our story. I can't wait to read some more with you.